So I've got in the vise my grub hook, size 12, with a three, three mil bead. You know, notice I've got a gold bead. <coughs> a lot of people, let's just shut this door a little bit. A lot of people will bang in about the benefits of uh, different colour beads. However, gold on this particular pattern works really well for me. Um, so a little bit of gold wire, it's quite thin. It's not actually part of the tie and more just for holding the dubbing in. I'll show you a wee trick here with the with a wire, if you just see that, you just kink the end over and that'll butt up nicely into the bead, kind of locks it in place if you like. Now, what I like to do is <coughs> Start for the top of the hook shank. I've got here some hair dub, SLF, and this apple olive is the colour I'm wanting. Sometimes I like, I'm dealing with rabbit and like man made fibres. I have a little bit of this stuff, it's a little bit of wax. That's enough for me. And then just create a rope of the dubbing and make sure you've got a, a nice even rope all the way down. But bear in mind when you're putting this dubbing on, you're going to have this all the way down the shank and all the way back up. So normally for a size 10, I'd have about two and a half inches of dubbing rope. Here I've got four. I'm just going to wind that down, nice touching turns, thin that out a little bit, try and create that taper, and then come up, a little bit more dubbing, see there's a tiny bit of glister in that, um, it's either glister or angel hair, one of the two, but yeah, works really well, then come in with your old wire and really quite close touch and turns no touch and turns sorry right really quite close open turns and then just stop butt it up against the bead pull the wire back create that little bed there and then just ping him off here's my Thorax area. I come in with my homemade dubbing brush. I just skim him up, give him a little tickle over and under. You want that fur just peeking out a little bit, and what it does is it creates a little ho halo when it's in the wall around the nymph. Now we've got jet black here. As with most good nymph patterns, you want that contrast. Come up just a little bit thicker than the actual body. And finally what I do is I'll take a little, so I'll take a little pinch like that. Put it over the eye and over the bead, cut the locking turns and then pull everything back like so and then it just creates a really nice, you'll see it when I'm finished, a little bit of varnish on the thread and <coughs> I like to keep a, a separate um, whip finishing tool because you get builds up of varnish on it so you're better just having one with that 
and then quick finish lock into the head in and with the scissors now take these fibers away and you'll see what you're left with is this gorgeous profile very reminiscent of a a sedge pupa if there's too many fibers there just come on your fingers and take it away but there you go you get an idea there very simple nymph 